Hey everyone, it's Rod with Power Group. Welcome back on the Pursuit of Wealth, your home for MJ Stocks, Crypto Assets, and Interviews. Today's Monday, June 12th. Hope you're well. Hope you had an awesome weekend as well. In this video, we're going to be discussing Erwin Simon, the CEO of Tilray, and whether or not should Erwin be fired. Uh, a lot of people online, through the community, on message boards, things like that, showing their displeasure and uh, unhappiness with Erwin and basically saying that they are calling for his head. They think that a lot of people, retail investors, think that he should be fired. I'm going to give my thoughts and opinions on this. Uh, personally, I don't think he should be. I think he's doing a great job, and it's just the, the lay of the land right now in the MJ space. But I'll give my thoughts and opinions and, and more details on that. Before we get to it, though, make sure to smash the like, help support me in the channel. It doesn't cost you anything. If you're new, you can subscribe. Tick the bell. You'll be notified on any future videos or when I go live. I'm also getting very, very close to that half a million view mark on the channel. So first and foremost, thank you very much to the community and those who supported me along the way. Not feeling 100% today. If you can hear the raspiness in my voice, uh, getting over a pretty nasty cold. Hopefully we'll be back to, to normal here in the next couple of days. But moving on, I posted a couple of videos here recently. Obviously, Tilray was down um, substantially ever since they announced the 150 million convertible note. So the refinancing of debt. Uh, then there was a bear flag that confirmed it was targeting about 124 USD. And uh, we since recovered, we're up about 5% there today. And then I also did a video on Tilray and the possibility of whether or not Tilray could potentially acquire Village Farms. I give my reasoning behind that. And again, that's just me speculating. But uh, if you haven't seen those videos, be sure to check those out. But there was an interesting article here from heroesofhemp.com. And it was about a powerful message from the uh, CEO which is Erwin Simon of Tilray and the future of the MJ industry. And again, I know a lot of people are very unhappy with this man. Uh, there's been, you know, some challenges and a lot of people are basically just upset because the share price is low. And they recently did an AMA, Ask Me Anything. I did a video on that, recapping that. Uh, and that was with the CFO. And, uh, you know, it, it just goes to show he even believe, he's, he believes, he said it in the AMA multiple times that he doesn't believe that the yeah, true value of Tilray is reflected in the share price. And we know that that's what they're going to say. Any executive of a company whose share price is down, you know, 99% or 90 plus percent from the recent highs, 52 week highs or all time highs. That's of course, that's where they're gonna default to, right? But again, it's the whole industry, right? It's not just recently, I did a video as well on Fire and Flower that's, all, that's basically going insolvent. They filed for creditor protection. Uh, Zenibus filed for creditor protection. There's tons of LPs, there's over a thousand LPs, right? Uh, which we'll get into here in just a moment. And it's just the competition in the space and all names are down 80, 90% plus from February 2021 highs and all time highs. So it's not just, a tilt rate problem. It's not just, you know, uh, they're potentially acquiring Hexo here. That's pretty much a, a done deal now, in my opinion, as I expected. But uh, it's not just LPs here in Canada. It's not one or two companies. It's multiple companies. It's retailers like Fire and Flower. Uh, and there's probably going to be a lot more retailers, especially mom and pop shops that go, you know, by the wayside that just become irrelevant and they either go bankrupt or insolvent. And then there's going to be a ton of producers as well, right? And then there's going to be, there's even companies in the States that are struggling. So in my opinion, I don't think the CEO of Tilray needs to be fired. I think he's doing a great job with, you know, the hand that he was dealt sort of thing in, the, in this brutal bear market that we've been in. And if you think about it, he's very diversified in the company, right? They have alcohol business, they have a distribution business, they have an MJ business, and now they're acquiring, in my opinion, the best company in MJ, which is Hexo. And uh, long term, I think this company is going to do just fine. And like I said, um, it's just kind of the hands that he was dealt. And he could have acquired, he tried to acquire Hexo back, I think it was in November of 2021. And that was at around $3 a share. So realistically, I think he played the cards well. He, you know, was able to get Hexo for pennies on the dollar and uh, for around 56 million in an all stock transaction. So again, the fact that he, you know, he waited, he didn't pull the plug there, neither did, did Hexo. And then he had them by the, uh, you know what, right, after the industry started to go the other way and we had a brutal multi-year bear market. So I think he's playing it well. And like I said, it's just no one could have predicted this this bear market. And I know everybody gets pretty down when the share price is down. But again, the share price is not indicative of a company's value. That's why we use like price to, you know, price to earnings and book value and things like that, different valuation metrics that we can and especially with a highly growth you know stock high growth stock or in this industry where you know it's not uncommon for industries to see this crypto dropped you know 99 percent from all-time highs in 2019 so did amazon back in the day right and they weren't selling illegal drugs so kind of have to cut them some slack here and i think ultimately uh in the future uh, there's gonna this company's gonna pay uh, a massive dividend right like not just an actual dividend but there's gonna be a lot of uh there's gonna be a lot of rewards and I think this company is built for success. But Tilray CEO discussed the challenging MJ market acquisition plans and the 
acquisition of Hexo. We'll dive deeper into this. So he said, MJ market challenges. As the MJ industry is still in its nascent stage, there are numerous challenges that need to be overcome. Simon explained that it only has been four years since MJ legalized and for rec recreational use in Canada. Additionally, there are over 1,000 LPs in place today and multiple retail stores that still make it challenging to stand out as a company. Simon believes that a company must take the lead position in the market, which it has done now with the acquisition of Hexo once it goes through, which is no different from any consumer packaged goods. However, he believes that this can only be achieved through consolidation and it must be done correctly. And that's just mergers and acquisitions, right? And that's what happened with Hexo. And now it's going to essentially be Tilray, Afria, Hexo, and Redican, right? So good luck to the rest of the uh, the LPs out there. Those thousand LPs, a lot of them are just going to go insolvent. We know there's hundreds of millions of unpaid federal excise taxes. So it's just a matter of time, right? Canadian government's the biggest beneficiary from legalization, getting all those tax dollars, but now they're the biggest creditor. And I think they're going to get a, a rude awakening and a wake-up call uh, that things need to change. And right now we're going through the review here of the MJ Act in, uh, in Canada, where hopefully they can make a bunch of uh, amendments and changes to this that will be more favorable for the industry. But regarding Tilray's Hex acquisition of Hexo, Simon stated that the deal would benefit both Tilray and Hexo shareholders with the acquisition Tilray aims to not only, uh, not only get syn synergies, but also grow the brand. Simon believes that a lot needs to change in Canada in regards to how the brands are marketed and how consumers are educated in buying the product. He added that Canada is the only country in the world where adult use MJ is legal and ultimately Canada has the responsibility to show the rest of the world how to market it. And that's something being reviewed in the MJ Act. Simon also mentioned that the Canadian government is making a lot of tax dollars from the Can Canadian MJ industry and has vested interest in making it work. I would agree. Keys to a deal. So Simon believes that there are several things that must... Uh, one must look at when considering doing a deal. The first is the price of a deal, the price of a deal which should be attracted to benefit both sets of shareholders. Second is synergies and savings, and Tilray aims to achieve this in the first year. The company is looking to achieve 25 million plus uh, of synergies and savings in the first year loan. However, the most critical aspect of the deal is how Tilray plans to grow its market share, which is currently at 13%. The company aims to grow its market share double digits by taking it from competitors, taking in uh, competitors, and bringing in new new users. And then global impact. Um, I'm not going to go through all this, but it, it is interesting. I would encourage you to take it, uh, take this into account and and read the rest of it. But I'll move on in effort of uh, of you know just time and I have a couple of things I want to go over here. But obviously, inflation challenges and interest rates uh, something as well that uh, a lot of companies didn't really foresee happening. So that definitely played a role. And then obviously C nineteen right. So you can't just really blame one person, one company, it's uh, it's an industry problem and a lot has to do with the government. So again, if you, if you really want to blame someone, I would blame mostly the government and uh, macroeconomic events. Again, I think Tilray CEO Erwin Simon is doing a great job. Hopefully I can interview him here soon as well. I interviewed the CEO of Hexo, Charlie Bowman, and the CFO, Julius uh, Ivanitz. So hopefully I can interview uh, either the CFO or CEO, hopefully Erwin Simon, or maybe even both in the same situation uh, here in the future. But uh, we'll get that done hopefully in the not too distant future. But I just want to remind everybody that there is the meeting for the Hexo shareholder meeting on June 14th, which is on Wednesday, and that's going to be at 10 a.m. Eastern time, and I'm going to be voting in favor of. So this is to approve the Tilray transaction. I'm going to be voting in favor of. I'm not anticipating any anything to go awry with this. I think it's going to go through. And uh, yeah, I, I think this is going to be ultimately great for shareholders in the long term, right? I think Tilray will be here in five to 10 years from now. I also did a video about two months ago on what was better to sell uh, Tilray, uh, sell Hexo shares and buy Tilray. So if you already had Hexo shares when this news broke, you could have sold and bought Tilray. There was a discount. First and foremost, this is for entertainment purposes only. This isn't financial advice. I'm not telling you to buy, sell, or hold. Uh, I would never do that. But I just gave the facts, right? And just a quick update today in that video and around that time, there was around a 23% discount. So I was able to sell some of my Hexo shares and buy Tilray, me meaning 23% cheaper than if I just waited to. To, till it converted automatically. So if I would have waited, I would have got 23% less shares, right? So that's why I took advantage of selling it early. And right now, as we get, I said, as we get closer to the deal being done, right, it's expected to close this month in June. And we have the Geraldine meeting on, four, on the 14th on Wednesday to approve it. And we should find out on the 15th as well, which is Hexo is going to report third quarter 2023 earnings and then the conference call. So Thursday, June 15th at 10 a.m. EDT will be the conference call. There's the details. And uh, this is from Business Wire. And uh, on Wednesday, 
the financial results will be released after market close on Wednesday, June 14th. So not only do we get that vote, we should see an update on that as well during the conference call and on the uh, till rate transaction, we should see this close this month. But as I said in this video, as we get closer to the date and the, and the closure of the deal, the discount would dwindle, right? It'd get lower and lower. And sure enough, it was at around 23%. Now it stands at 10.6%. So again, it should continue to drop even more from that. So expect till rate to potentially outperform Hexo in terms of share price over the next couple of weeks as we look toward that deal closing. But should be interesting here just to see what uh, what comes of Hexo earnings uh, and then see if whether or not they can get uh, you know some sort of profitability uh, in those earnings. And then like I said, we should get up, an update on the, uh, the vote from June 14th with the till rate transaction. And then uh, yeah, anything else on the conference call, I'll be joining that as well. So I'll be sure to keep everybody up to date, but let me know in the comments below, do you think Erwin Simon should be fired or do you think this is more of a industry problem versus a CEO problem? Always love hearing from you. Going in it there, it's Rob with Power Group. Thanks again for joining us on The Pursuit of Wealth. Smash the like, I would appreciate it. Subscribe, share the video with anybody that might find value and we'll see you in the next video.